Okay, let's uh, take a look at question 31 now. And uh, this is a very, very doable question. And for it, I'm going to use my calculator. I didn't use it on like the previous question, but I think on this one, it might be effective for me just to have it on there and show you how I would use it. You do get to use, as you know, a four function calculator uh, without a percent and, and all that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll just be sticking to uh, multiplication, subtraction, addition, etc. for solving some of these things because that's what you'll be able to do. Um, anyway, look at this question. It says, which of the following numbers can be represented on the number line between points P and Q? Well, what they want you to, to determine is what fraction is going to fall in between P and Q. Is it A, 17 over 37, B, 26 over 43, or C, 39 over 59, or D, 57 over 71. Well, you're going to do this in steps. And the first thing that you have to determine is what fractions exist on this number line from 0 to 1. So since we're going from 0 to 1, everything is a fraction in between, as, as I'm sure you know. So let me go ahead and draw our little fraction bars. I'm sure that's the official term for these things, so that's what we'll call them, fraction bars. And let's count them off now. We're going to go from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that means that in order to make 1, 1 whole, we're going to have 8 over 8 right here. So that means all of the denominators along this little number line, all of the fractions, are going to be eighths because that's how the line has been divided up. It's been broken up into eight equal parts. And that's going to mean that this is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. And I'm not going to bother reducing anything because uh, it'll just make things more complicated than they need to be. All right, so basically what you and I need to do then is figure out, let me write it down here, what number falls between 5 eighths and 6 eighths. Now, I think there's an easier way to do this if we work with decimals. So why don't we convert those fractions to decimals? Let me move this calculator over and uh, let's do that. So I'm going to divide 8 into 5 to get my decimals. So I'm going to type in 5, divide that by 8, and I wind up with 0.625. So I'll just write down 0.625 and draw my little line. Now let's do the same thing for 6 over 8. So I'll clear this out. 6 divided by 8, and that gives me 0.75. So now that I've converted these to decimals, what I can do with all of these complicated looking fractions, um, A, B, C, and D, is do the same thing, because it's, I think it's easier to work with fractions myself, rather than trying to figure out percent. So let's go ahead and do the conversions for these um, fractions as our answers. So let's take 17 divided by 37, and that gives us 0. Uh, 0.459. Let's do the same thing with 26 divided by 43, and that gives me 0. 0.60. And all I'm doing, as you know, is dividing the bottom into the top, as you can see. Let's do the same thing for 59 into 39. And the way we'll do that is 39 goes first, divided by 59. And it looks like we got 0.661. And for the last one, D, let's clear this out, and we'll take 57 divided by 71. And what's that give us? It gives us 0.80. Okay, so some of our fractions go out to three places, some I just took out to two, because look, you should just think of this as, as like change, you know? We're really trying to figure out what fits between 62 cents and 75 cents. Would it be 46 cents if we were to round up, or 45? No. How about 60 cents? No. How about 66 cents? That looks pretty good to me, because 80, 80 would be 80 cents, and that's out of the range. So the correct answer for this one, then, is 66.66, because that fits in between those two decimals. Those two decimals represent the fractions. Those fractions represent points P and Q, so the answer is C. I hope you found that helpful. Let's go on to the next one.